Hello, my name is Chris Roberts. I want to welcome you to The Long Show. Before I introduce our guest today, I've got two little announcements to make. The first one, um, <clears throat> next Monday, between 8 to 10, we're going to be doing a show which is going to call the Cheshire County Oral History of the Veterans. We're inviting any veteran, especially of World War II or Korea, to come in and we're going to videotape and ask some of their experiences. Why they joined the military, why they stayed in the military, what was the benefit of, of the military. So that will be 8 to 10 next Monday at the Keene Senior Center. If you, I know some of them are getting up in age. If you need to be in and out a certain time, call the um, Keene Senior Center and we can make an appointment for what time we can introduce you. The second one, it's a little personal one. My granddaughter, Taylor, she watches the show all the time, and she keeps saying, Papa, you're not talking to me. So today I just want to say thank you. I'm here. I'm Taylor. We are talking to you. So have a good day. So now to the part of the show. Our guest. Thank you. I'm Mary Delisle. I'm campaign director at Monadnock United Way. Yes. I'm Jeff Miller, Chris. I'm the board chair of Monadnock United Way. And I'm Nancy Vincent, this year's general campaign chair for the Monadnock United Way campaign. And so before we get going into the goals and what you hope to accomplish in the United Way, what brought you to the United Way? What was your position? Well, um, the opportunity to come onto staff came to me about six years ago. And after having been a longtime volunteer, um, holding many roles through the years, uh, campaign chair, as Nancy has done, and Jeff as well, um, it was just, it felt like home and it felt like the perfect opportunity. And I've loved being there every minute since. Jeff? Well, I'm a volunteer there. I don't work for the United Way. I started giving when, uh, when I moved to Keene 28 years ago and uh, then started volunteering and slowly got pulled in. The United Way has a, like okay. a magnetic effect on many of us and you never manage to escape. Nancy? Uh, well, I'm uh, the director of the Keene Public Library and I came to Keene 1987. And everywhere I've worked, I've always given to the United Way in the area. But when I came to Keene, it was clearly, it's up close and personal. You know, the people work at the agencies, you see the people who have the needs and so, just volunteered over the years, and uh, this year have the privilege of being the general campaign chair. And I can tell you from personal experience, I've seen Nancy a lot of times at the city council. Volunteering in Keene area, Cheshire County area, it's not one of those things you just pop up, go in or out, or because I've seen a lot of places where people get on the board of directors, a nonprofit, just to make it look good for their board. In a lot of times, volunteering in this area is almost like a full-time job. It takes a lot of time, energy, emotion, and passion to do that. Any? Okay. Well, it, 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 it does, I, and I, but I think uh, you don't notice it after a while. And part of volunteering is understanding that we all have a responsibility to give back to our communities. And uh, you, you can slowly step into something, and the next thing you know, uh, you're using up a lot of hours every week. But unlike many other aspects of life, you, you see a very immediate return. Uh, it's something to feel good about. You, know, you meet lots of fascinating people. And it's, it's a growing experience for all of us to do it. So it's, it's a win-win. And I think this com community wouldn't be what it is without this level of volunteerism. Yeah. And let's go right, cut right yeah. to the chase. Yeah. The magic number that you're hoping to reach this year? Is $2,296,208. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, the goal is set every year through a process called allocations. So it's a goal that demonstrates the need. It's the need that the partner agencies, the monies they need to provide the services that are so vital to the people in the region. Um, the process is uh, volunteer-based and a group of like 22 volunteers get together and they review the agency's request and visit the agencies and um, really ask detailed questions as to what the need is and how they're going to provide the services. So it's a goal, it's a real goal. It, it demonstrates the real need. It's, it's kind of when you put it in perspective, that's the amount of money that Tom Brady made during the month of October <laughs> playing um, football. But when you go and look at it, how many people in the Cheshire County area that benefits from your hard work? 
It's huge. Um, last year, uh, throughout 2009, help was provided over 69,000 times to people throughout Cheshire County and part of Hillsborough County. So we're reaching far over um, Mason and New Ipswich area, up towards the Hillsborough area, out towards Hinsdale, and down across the southern border of New Hampshire. And, and there are literally tens of thousands of people that are receiving help. Every year. And those people change every year. Every year. As you know, it's, it's 10,000 people one year. Those, uh, some of those, fortunately, benefit from the services, drop off, new people come on board, and, uh, and you never know who it's going to yeah. be, Chris. It's our friends, it's our neighbors, it's ourselves. For example, as something as the 2005 floods, that could really wipe out a lot of people. And, you know, you could have insurance, but most people don't have flood insurance. You look at FEMA, but FEMA just gives you loans. What do you do to day to day? What happens if you lost your house, what are you going to do for the next six months? <clears throat> I think one of the messages that we give every year, but specifically this year, is just you just never know when you might need help or your neighbor might need help. And this is a network of services. It's a variety of services um, so that it's there when, when that, that specific need comes up, you have a place to go. But when you talk about your services, you just hit on a variety of services. Mm -hmm. In a lot of cases, for example, if we have an elderly person, you support the senior center, but if you have an elderly person who's in a house that has no heat and is being abused and has medical issues, that's four or five different areas. Mm -hmm. And so United Way helps coordinate that. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, um, our partner agencies um, work hand in hand together. Nobody feels that their agency does one single thing and they're going to be the only ones to help people. Everybody collaborates on a regular basis. They talk with each other all the time and we're just so fortunate to have our partner agencies working hand in hand together the way they do. The, um, <clears throat> what I like what you said because a lot of nonprofits is just worrying about themselves, their own survival, so they don't necessarily help. They want to get credit and that doesn't do very good for the person that needs the help. No, and I, I think, well, we've all sat through our process of spending time with agencies. We've volunteered our own time on the boards and, uh, and engaged in the activities, the volunteer activities of many of our agencies. And I can tell you, Chris, I have never seen an ego factor at work on the part of people that have basically have chosen to spend their lives helping other people in this area. They've made such a huge difference, and they stay way below the radar screen and taking any credit for it. It's wonderful. You never lived in Southern California, have you? <laughs> no, I've, I've, uh, I've spent a fair amount of time traveling in Southern California. There's a reason why I've chosen still to live in New Hampshire. <laughs> when we talk about the number, the number isn't as high as last year, but it's higher than what you brought in last year. That's true. And can you explain why? Well, um, and I might refer to Jeff a little as it's the board chair too, um, but we didn't, uh, times were just, you know, the economy was really hard and right towards the beginning of the campaign it suddenly became very clear that a lot of the traditional donors weren't going to be able to make a gift this year or at least not as give as, give as much as they could. But we also understood that the need didn't go away. If anything, the need became more. So when it was realized that we weren't going to make goal, the board got together and they developed some strategies um, to really help out the best they can. I think the first thing they did was ask the agencies to review their request and see if there's any changes or any reasons why they, they could um, ask for a little less. And I think, can't remember the number of agencies, but a substantial number of 16 agencies. 16 or 17 16 agencies or 17. came back with roughly $56,000 collectively that they could take less than they had originally requested due to, you know, a grant that came in that they weren't expecting or maybe a large gift and they, you know, they just worked really hard to come up with whatever they possibly could to make so a difference. You wanted realistic goals without setting yourself up for failure. No, I, I, Chris, I think it's important to understand uh, and it's, it's a misconception in the community that we, we set a goal that we think is attainable. And the, what the process does, the allocations process, is it takes requests from each of our agencies, reviews those requests, in many cases helps the agencies understand some of the financial aspects of their requests, reviews the level of service, quality of service, will make a recommendation on the amount that the United Way should fund. At the end of the day, the total of those recommendations becomes our goal. We don't start from uh, a top level goal and say, well, my gosh, that's so much higher than last year or it's so much lower than last year. Most important, 
is the work that our agencies do before they get to the process of talking with the United Way. Our agencies have been super in looking at their expenses. As you can imagine, we're, we're all feeling the pain of, of the economic downturn, and they've done a terrific job of coming with honed down budgets. And so it's, in some ways it's made the process of the allocations that much easier. So the goal is the result of a lot of work by our agencies in being realistic and by our volunteers putting in literally thousands of man hours in understanding exactly what the United Way can do and should do to fund those budgets. So, <clears throat> it, so your allocation number is based on validated needs. Yes. So if you fail to meet your <clears throat> allocation number, needed needs are not going to be able to be given. You have said that very well. <clears throat> uh, so in the end, and just to continue the story a little bit, the board did allocate some uh, emergency funding so that I think in the end, any agencies who hadn't uh, already reduced what, what they could, the rest of everybody got 98.99% of the allocation because it was just seen to be you know, as, as Jeff said, those are real needs out there, and somehow, collectively, we needed to come up with the money we, as close as we could. And when we look at state government, we look, even looking at the city where they have to validate everything, a lot of that funding, <coughs> excuse me, community support funding, is just isn't there there, or there's being um, cuts there too. So everybody's cutting. Mm -hmm. But like you said, none of the needs whatsoever are going away. Exactly, exactly. <clears throat> because about a month ago, the King, Sen King Sentinel had an article, the number of children that are going to get free and reduced lunches are going up drastically. So if they're qualifying for free and reduced lunch, that means there's an awful lot of families in the area that are under undue stress. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> and so when you look at any goal, you have some major players who play an important part in, in reaching that goal. What about some of the organizations that are not only giving money, but providing untold volunteer hours, free hours? Well, I'll, I'll, uh, everyone that contributes, contributes in their yeah. own way. Yeah. So we have, uh, we have individual <coughs> donors who are fortunate enough to be able to give significant sums, and, uh, and their generosity is very much appreciated. We have, uh, we have individual donors who, who, who just surprise us, and it's not to make you cry, when while their dollar amounts of uh, giving may appear to be modest, they represent a substantial portion of their income, a greater proportion of their income in some cases than, than mm -hmm. some of the donors that we would regard as being generous. Some people can't give uh, greatly out of their wallet, they give of their time. We have companies that do a fantastic job in offering people, not only offering people to help work on the campaign, but encouraging their employees to become volunteers in turn out in the community. So it's a, it's a widespread effort and we are, we are so fortunate and it's so easy to forget how fortunate we are to live in, in the kind of community where that happens, where we have a wide variety and a very deep level of caring and giving. And as you say, if you go to Southern California, <laughs> spend a little time, Chris, you'll appreciate what we have here, where people don't get left to their own devices. I know I lived in Southern California, Irvine, for 11 years, a really wealthy community, one of the top. And people think um, donating is just writing a check. Mm. But there's little time involved. I can write a check for $10,000. I can't, but some of the people can, <laughs> can write a check for $10,000 when actually what the people really need is someone in the food kitchen or someone just showing care and, and compassion. It's so, <clears throat> what I like, because I, I like to think I'm a practical person, is that when I make a donation to the United Way, I know that when I give a dollar, almost that entire dollar gets into the hands of someone who needs a service. And, and, it's be, and it happens because, not just because of good management on the part of the United Way and good management on the part of our member agencies, but it, it's exactly what you said, the prevalence of volunteers and the thousands and thousands of hours that are donated. And again, below the surface, no, no big PR attached to that, and it's everything from the volunteers that basically help run the majority of the time spent on the United Way campaign, so the costs of that campaign are extremely low, and then when the money gets to an organization like the Community Kitchen, well, who's standing in line, who's doing a lot of the work at the Community Kitchen? 
it's volunteers who are helping the critical staff that's in place. And so the cost of delivering those services is low. So again, that's what makes a big part of this part of the country special. It, my dollar is spent much more efficiently here than it is in many other parts of the country. And, and I think that's important because over the past five, ten years, there's been a lot of negativity. I won't name some of the organizations you, where some of the CEOs and the directors have really been living the high life, flying, um, chauffeured cars and stuff. And then when you go and look at the amount of money that actually goes to, the, to help people, it's pretty low. Some of them have less than 50% of every dollar actually goes to help people. Yeah, it's sad but true, and, and uh, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. The United Way's uh, per, the fundraising cost of the United Way is slightly under 11 cents per dollar. And as you say, when you look nationally at nonprofit fundraising, it's very easy to find organizations in the 30%, 40%, 50%. And while those causes are worthy, I, again, would rather <laughs> contribute my money when I know that 89 or 90 cents of that is getting into the hands of people that need the services that that money pays for. The um, <clears throat> Nancy, what made you volunteer? It, it's a lot of work. You still have a lot of work at the um, the library. What made you decide that you want to volunteer to to head it? Um, well, I had volunteered over the years, and you know, as you, as you volunteer over the years, you kind of <laughs> get you get yeah <laughs> more and more you know uh, responsibilities, and um, and it is an honor. It is an <laughs> honor. The um, I work with thousands of volunteers. I mean, I don't directly work with volunteers, but I know every one of them is putting in an awful lot of their own time, too. And uh, one of the things being general campaign chair has, has enabled me to do this time. I've known these people for a long time, but you know them differently when you're the general, when you have such a close connection. And you really, you're energized yourself because you see the dedication. So many people work year after year. I looked around at uh, kickoff. I looked around all the people who came up, and these people had worked for 10, 15 years. I forget. You know, somebody, I think, one of the division chairs or I said, had been 27 years. So, so you can't help but want to be involved in that and be, and be as committed as all the rest of the volunteers. The other thing I really love about this year is the campaign theme. It's called In the Winter is All of Us. And it is, it's donors, it's volunteers, the recipients, it's agencies. And it's really pointing out that those are not distinct groups. They, they are all of us. We can be a donor and a volunteer. We can be a donor and a recipient. And it just brings to me mind that we're all stakeholders in, in this campaign. And, and we all need to work just as hard as we can on it. The, um, what Nancy <clears throat> just said, if we go to your a thousand people given two hours a week, which is, which is not unusual around mm -hmm. this area, mm -hmm. that saves you, or gives you, save is not the right word, mm -hmm. but that gives you millions of dollars on an annual basis of free labor. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I can't even mm -hmm. begin to imagine what <laughs> it would cost us in that 30, 40, 50 percent range to, to run our campaign, to reach our goal every year if we didn't have the amazing support of our volunteers. Um, and they come from companies large and small. They're individuals who may be retired and don't want to step back from the community, want to get more involved now that they have a little bit more time. So the age ranges from students at Keenan State. We have, um, through our loaned employee program, which has been going on since 1980, um, with the uh, Markham at the time started that program by loaning three of their employees to us. And, and the loaned employees through the years have grown. We have 15 this year. And they go out and they are um, a, a large percent of, of what we do and that they reach out to and support local company campaigns. So if um, it can be a large company like Markham or Timken or Peerless, and it can be a very small company, um, electronic imaging materials, Baudelaire. There are a lot of very small organizations throughout the community who will also engage in employee campaigns. And these folks go through training and they go out and spend as much time as these companies will allow educating their employees on United Way and our partner agencies, the good that's being done, the help that's being provided. And these employers, in turn, provide their employees with the opportunity to make a gift each year, um, via, most of them via payroll deduction, which is easy it's some, to say to somebody, if you could give <coughs> up one cup of coffee a week, one bottle of soda, one candy bar from the vending machine, and doing so would help a friend or a neighbor or maybe a coworker, maybe even a family member. Wouldn't you want to do that? 
and it's awfully hard to say, gee, no, I don't think yeah. I would. Most people will answer positively to that. And, and we're just blessed with so many um, companies, large and small, willing to help us to participate that way. Because in the military, you use the c combined federal campaign fund. And it's so easy, mm -hmm. what's a dollar, what's two dollars right. a month, you don't even see it. Then all of a sudden, you're donating 24, 25 Absolutely. bucks. And if you have a company and you got 200 um, people, then all of a sudden, People donate more, but all of a sudden you get a pretty substantial amount and no one notices it. Absolutely. And, and in order to continue to, to provide the support that we've been fortunate enough to do through the years, that donor base has to continue to grow. We don't want to have to rely on the same organizations, the same groups of employees year after year. So reaching out and inviting as many local employers um, as, as are willing to participate to say, sure, come on in for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, talk to my employees, we'll hand them all a pledge card. You know, we'll see what we can come up with to help the community this year. And, you know, every, every new employee campaign that we add to me is just crossing a huge hurdle. And we're, very, we're excited whether there's five employees or 50. We love every minute of it. And we, we really should have every employer in the region have an employee campaign. And I worked for Markham for 26 years, a super company, and at the time owned by the Putnam family, whose stamp of generosity I think will be felt in this community forever. And they were, uh, uh, not only personally, but as a company, they were, they were just very, very giving of their employees' time when employees wanted to give time away from the company and out at work. And I remember going once, uh, because of that, to speak at the New Hampshire uh, Center for Business Social Responsibility. <coughs> and I was finishing my speech, and someone in the audience said, well, it's all fine for a company like Markham to have employees give time back to the community because you're doing well financially. And my response was, you know, one of the reasons we're doing well financially is because we're doing good in the community. Because It's not because we have customers here, but when employees feel that they're engaged, feel that their employer cares, feel that they can pursue their passion along with their work, they're going to give more back to the place they work in. And it, it, it's a win-win. So I would say to any employer out there, to any employee <laughs> yeah. who yeah. works for a company without a campaign, yeah. it, this is not a cost. This is a benefit. And the United Way can make it easy. It's very, very easy to do it. And, it. and it pays dividends in the business. It pays dividends for you as employees. And it'll pay dividends back to the community that you've chosen to locate your business in and to work in. And I think you, you hit a key. I was on the board of directors of Manadnock Prevention and Family Violence. I guess they, they keep switching the numbers, <clears throat> the, the letters. But if a woman who has a couple of kids is the suffering from domestic violence, it's going to result in low productivity at the business. Yes. And so, or if she can't get a babysitter, she can't, a single mother, she's going to be worried. She's going to be on the phone or she's going to be texting trying to figure out how is her kids safe. Again, lower productivity. So what is it, a couple of hours for a small company to, to run a campaign? To, if even that, I mean, the, the, the time that they gather their employees together can be anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour, I suppose, depending on how, much, how long they're willing to share. Some companies will do it on a lunch hour. Some will invite their employees in a little bit before they start the work day and hit the ground running and they have a little breakfast and, and they let um, speakers come in. Our agency, our partner agencies will provide um, speakers. They will come in, the directors will come in, board chairs will come in, staff members will come in. And, and just help to let these employees know about what they do, about their services. Monanoch Center for Violence Prevention is one. Robin does a great job yeah. um, with speaking opportunities. We have many, many, many of our partner agencies that will, at the drop of a hat, um, leave what they're doing, leave their desk, and come to, to speak at a, a small company kickoff or a large company kickoff. We have them that do multiple meetings. We've had um, folks from agencies spend an entire day at a company because they want to do a meeting every hour for 10 minutes or at shift changes. We have folks volunteering at 11 o'clock at night and at 6 o'clock in the morning. And we're just so blessed that our, not only our partner agencies are willing to do this, but our volunteers step up and, and make this happen, help to bring the understanding and the knowledge of United Way um, to everybody who will listen. The um, good or bad, I'm a pretty good numbers guy. So if you have a small organization, 25 people, and you give up an hour to the United Way. But then if I have a woman who's a result of domestic violence or a mother who doesn't have child care, in the cost of about four to six weeks, you, her la lack of productivity is far more than that 25 man hours or 
work hours that you've lost at that one time. Absolutely. It goes to right what you said. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, if your campaign took an hour per employee, if you total up every minute anybody could possibly have spent, <laughs> do you not think you're going to get an additional five one hundredths of one percent of productivity out of your workforce? And that, by the way, not suggesting that's why anyone would run an employee campaign, but if you're worried about the cost and the impact on your workforce, people like to be asked to give. They like to feel that they're, they're included. It, but if they're not asked, they're not going to give, which isn't good for us, yeah. right. and, it's, and it's not good for them. And payroll deduction, yeah. it's, it's a proven fact that by folks offered the opportunity to give by payroll deduction are actually make the decision quicker, and they make a more generous gift right. than if somebody says, write a check <clears throat> and give it to me in two weeks. They'll fill out a pledge form right off, and they'll be more generous, and it takes two minutes versus ten minutes. One, one of the things I really like about the United Way and a number of your agencies which is quite different than other places ar around the country. <clears throat> you don't view your people as victims. You don't parade them around as numbers, as justification. You treat them as whole people. You, you do it best you can to give them a step up so they can recover and move on. But then, if you go to a number of these agencies and you say, hey, why, why are you here? Why are you volunteering? And then they said, because I was helped. Mm. I just want to pay back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> like, again, that goes to the whole wellness of the community. Well, as you said, Chris, it's, uh, you know, the campaign theme this year is it, it's all of us. And it is all of us. And we, we're, we, we statistically are all likely to be uh, someday working with yep. one of these agencies as a client. And if not, I guarantee you 100% of us benefit from that work because imagine if we would, what this community would be like without that rich fabric of human service agencies that we have in place. What would it be like to live here? And I don't think we want to be thinking about that. Well, Nancy, you have all that paperwork and statistics. Yeah. Um, how are we doing so far for the goal? For the goal? Um, See, so last week, every, we have a weekly report breakfast, and everybody turns in all the work they've done for the week, and it's been, it's been really encouraging, I think. Uh, we started at 38%, and we've had increases every week of 5%. Last week, we had a 10%, so we're at 61% of goal. We know there's still lots of work to be done out there, but it's an encouraging number. We're getting a lot of positive uh, response. Everybody, I really think, is working just as hard as they can, and they certainly are. Uh, giving what they can. So the other message this time is we do seek more donors and we seek to broaden the donor base. Um, so if anybody knows, you know, can reach out for those who aren't in employee campaigns, they also can contact the office or uh, the Mananoc United Way office or they can go on the website muw.org and give. But the purpose being that the more donors we have, the less it's burden on everybody and it will ensure that we have this network of services available for everyone. And so <clears throat> be, before we um, wrap this up and, and go to a break, because we're going to have some outstanding individuals coming on talking about how the United Way made a difference in their life. <clears throat> and so I want to thank you. And you're doing a wonderful job. When do you expect, the final question for now is, when do you expect to, to reach your goal? Oh, is yeah. this a betting pool? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's another way to raise yeah. money. 50-50 yeah, right, right, right. yeah. raffle. January 29th. January 29th. Or is it going to be December 23rd? I, I actually <laughs> like it to be. I actually like it to be December 17th. Okay. 17th. Yeah. People yeah. want to have a Christmas holidays. People want to have a Christmas holidays. Or the holiday right. season. But we are not <laughs> going to stop until we have extracted every last dollar from the warm hearts in this region. <laughs> because they're out there. We just they're need to there. find them. They and many right of them we can't find. So we need, we need them to find us. Find us. We, we ask as many people as we can. We cannot reach everyone. Although if we tried to reach everyone, I think you'd see those campaign costs <laughs> climb above that's a right. level with which we're comfortable. So we rely on some people being proactive and coming forward. And yeah, that's that. You know who you are. Yeah. So yeah. Please <laughs> come. Well, hopefully we'll be able to reach some of the people who... Maybe they're retired, or maybe the other exactly. place. They're not in an organization. Maybe some will even go to the boss and say, "Hey, boss, how come we don't have a campaign like this?" Okay, <clears throat> so this is the best investment anyone can make in Absolutely. our community. It's effective. It's efficient. 
and it's local. It's, there, there's, there's nothing even close. Okay, so we'll take a break. We'll show a, a little, um, as I said before, my jealousy slide, and uh, it'll be about two and a half minutes. Okay. And hopefully one, two, or three of you will um, stick around after this so you can give me a wrap-up and get those final pitches that you might have forgotten to say. Great. Perfect. Okay, thank you Thanks, so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Well, welcome back. Maybe one of these days we'll have a contest to see how many people can name all those national parks in there. So, here with a new guest, your name? My name is Heidi Gouget. I'm a resident of Swansea and an employee at the Savings Bank of Walpole, and I'm a volunteer yeah. for the Monadnock United Way. Was you one of the, when, on that opening, the kickoff, was you one of the ones that were on the stage? I was, all in an <laughs> evening gown. It was very fun. <laughs> <clears throat> so. The United Way has helped you and your family. It has, yes. um, and actually very recently. I didn't start out being involved in the United Way because of that. And I think a lot of volunteers, um, Chris, are. I think they become volunteers because they've received programs or services. Uh, my start with the United Way was, was very different. I was a donor, um, my first job some 20 plus years ago, <laughs> and while I didn't work in this area, I worked for an organization that was very involved in their local United Way, and as I was a donor there, I became involved in things, I think, that probably Mary talked about in her segment with you, employee campaigns and, and days of caring where you can go out to various agencies, and in the last six years, I moved to Swansea, and when I was asked to participate in this campaign, I, I was thrilled to do so. Um, I've worn several different hats. Uh, team captain, which is an individual who's responsible for many accounts and talking to typically small business owners to help them to understand the benefit of 
donating and making a contribution to the United Way. And more recently, for the last few years, I'm what's called a division chair. And I have several team captains that report back to me on a weekly basis, and I help them oversee and manage their campaigns. But what happens if, if I want to help and I'm scared? Because all the team captain, division, they always seem like, wow, that's a lot of time. That's a lot of responsibility. I want to help, but I don't know if I can help that much. Um, I think there's many roles uh, that a volunteer can play in the, in the United Way. Uh, a day of caring is a perfect example, trying to donate a few hours of your time at a specific agency, uh, maybe helping paint at a daycare or organize toys. Uh, being involved with the campaign as far as volunteering and contacting accounts, I have one of my team captains who has account executives. She has seven or eight people who work with her on her some 50 accounts so that they each contact a few. So their time isn't as great, perhaps, as somebody else who, who's a little bit more invested time-wise. And I, I heard you mention it earlier that sometimes volunteering feels like a full-time job. Yes. And sometimes it does uh, when you're involved in many different aspects. And, but I think that it, it grows on you and you grow into it. Uh, in addition to volunteering for the United Way, I have a special affinity for one of the partner agencies, and I think that ties into this year's whole campaign theme, where the winner is all of us. Donors, I, I've been a donor, again, for some 20 years. Volunteers working with the United Way campaign. Partner agencies, home health hospice and community service happens to be a special one to me. My husband and I took a class there to become hospice volunteers. So we go out and bring music to patients as they near the end of their lives. So we're volunteering for a separate agency, mm. and yet it's still a United okay. Way agency. So there's time spent there, too, that's sort of bundled in. Um, it is a lot of hours, but is, is very rewarding. And then there's the people who benefit from services. And... I think as I've made my campaign platform for the last several years, I often tell donors or potential donors, you never know when you might need to use that service. And I think maybe in the, this might have become a job approach, I personally became complacent in understanding that that message was meant for me too, that I might need services one day. And, and, I, and I think <clears throat> a lot of people get quite egotistic you know, it, when you're young, we all, always think we're indestructible. Nothing is going to happen. <clears throat> we have some, for example, you could be 18 years old and have a traumatic brain injury in a car, which changes the whole direction of your life. You could be 12, 13 years old, and all of a sudden you get some childhood cancer. And you, you're talking about hospice. We all think we're going to live forever. Then all of a sudden you can be your family has all moved away, you're at the end of the time, quote unquote, I mean, negative, you don't want to be warehoused in, in some nursing home. Some nursing homes are really good, some are warehouses, right. and you want to be able to go out with dignity. You want someone to be there so you're not lonely as, as you depart. I, I think that's true, and, and I think <clears throat> the United Way has so many different services where when those life surprises come up, you, they're surprises. You can't expect them, right? Maybe, maybe it's a death of a spouse who's in the military, and now your child needs a big brother. Uh, maybe it's something traumatic like cancer. Maybe it's a loss of job, and you just can't afford your heating bill this year. Um, in our case, it happened to be a, a child issue. Our youngest daughter, um, two summers ago, became very seriously ill, and it was right as I was ramping up for last fall's campaign and it really made that campaign take on a different meaning for me. Um, she had a, an infection. We spent a week up at Dartmouth Children's Hospital, and fortunately, they were able to send us home, but she had to have a, an intravenous line put in, and we needed to medicate her at home. <clears throat> the visiting nurse came, and they were available to us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, they helped me learn how to administer the medicine. They came, they changed her dressing and made a safe environment for her so we didn't have to travel anywhere. And I went from donor, volunteer, 
partner agency <laughs> volunteer to program recipient beneficiary in a matter of seven days. And as often as I said, you never know when you're going to need it, those words came right back to me. And I thought, what if the service wasn't here? What would we do? How much work could I miss? How much gas does it cost to travel to Dartmouth? Even for a family where both of us are employed, that's a, it's a huge expense. It's a huge time burden. And this agency was there to, to help us through that process. And I was very grateful. And it, it put us in that winner mode where we do fall into the spectrum of all four. And I think that many people in our area, um, this is a great area, you know, community, this, the Monomach area personifies the word community. Everybody helps everybody else. You know where to go to get your service. Um, and, and I think that it's just a great place to live and people can just feel comfortable here. But I would challenge anybody to tell me that they don't know someone who hasn't benefited from one of the United Way services. Two things you, when you're talking about driving up to Dartmouth. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> My granddaughter, three years old, she's had to go on the Dartmouth Hitchcock twice for um, procedures the last month. Yeah. <clears throat> Since I'm retired from the Marine Corps, I drove her, my daughter, and my granddaughter. Well, just going back, it was $50 mm -hmm. each day. There was no way that my daughter could afford it. I paid for it. Right. You're talking about um, how much work you could miss. Well, if your child's injured or sick, that's your number one priority in the world. You don't care about working. Right. But if you miss a couple of months' work, you can end up losing your house. Right. <clears throat> and it just keeps snowballing. When you're not supposed to have the stress, you even get more stress. That's correct. And, and I, I think when you find yourself in that situation, um, it, it's, it's depressing. It, it, it's scary. You don't know where to turn or what to do. And that's why we have these, these programs and services. And I, I think, too, if you're a donor to the agency, to the Mananoc United Way, it's an investment and it's an investment that you don't know when you're going to find your return on. Um, maybe it will be when you're 70 and you need the friendly bus to take you to a doctor's appointment because your adult children can't take you. Or maybe it's when you're in your 30s and you have a sick child. Maybe it's when you are a child and you have a big brother or you use the Y. There's such a wide range of, of services that I think it can meet everybody's need and you don't have to be scared when you're in that situation. Like again, one of my grandsons had a serious speech delay problem. <laughs> he went to Rise. Rise did a great job with him. Now he's doing so much better in school. He's even reading now where it used to be so difficult. So his Rise changed his whole directory in life, his whole direction. It gave him an opportunity. They do such a great job with, with a lot of kids. They do, and, and the funding is so critical for them to be able to continue to offer those types of programs and services. And, and I know that you know, the agencies work very hard to come up with the exact budget oh, yeah. they need to make sure that everybody's needs are met. And you know, a coffee, a coffee a week, maybe two, mm. I really don't need that Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Um, you know, I, I, can, I can put that to good use and feel really good about it by contributing that, that money to the United Way who can put it out there for those people who really need it. Um, if you give up one Starbucks a week, that's $200 a year. <laughs> that is true. I try to tell my teenagers that too. So, um, but, you know, and actually you mentioned, you mentioned the age of volunteers. Uh, we have volunteers at, at Keene State College who who give of their time. Last year's campaign, we were fortunate enough, the Monadnock Interna uh, Interact mm -hmm. Club, which is a high school Rotarian club, they took on um, the campaigning mm -hmm. for, for a town. And it's a great opportunity to get people involved early um, to understand that they can be part of the community by giving to the community. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, in the case of a 16-year-old, that's probably mm -hmm. not in dollars. But certainly in time, there's things that, that they could do, too. Um, anybody can volunteer. Just contact the office, and we'd be happy to put you to work. I don't think everybody realizes, or really anybody, unless they work for United Way, all the different types of organizations that you help. Elderly, boys and girls, 
big brother, big sister, mm-hmm. the why, rise, the prevention of family violence. Can you name some of the other ones that people would not even think of? That wouldn't even think of. Um, We have some uh, Cheshire Housing Trust where they help people um, find safe homes to live in. Um, There's an agency in Peterborough, which the name escapes me at the moment, but it's a great resource place for folks to go who have just been displaced from their jobs where you can get some help with that. Um, The why you named, Keen Daycare. Uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, we talked about that, Rise for Families, um, The Friendly Bus, Home Health Hospice and Community Service. Um, the list goes on mm. and on. Uh, there's some legal organizations that are also supported. Uh, right, there's, yes. there's, a, there's a service for everybody, um, and it's, it's there when we need it. <clears throat> and so you're willing to take anybody that's willing to volunteer no, no matter how much the time, you'll find a, a use for If them. somebody says, I have an hour of time to give a week, there is certainly something that we can find for them to do. Maybe it's stuffing envelopes mm. um, or putting together bags. We have some people um, who at the kickoff, we have big bags that need to get delivered to, to different businesses. And, you know, that's a small commitment, but it's still a commitment um, and still an investment in, in the agency. And I, I think that that's... That's important. I, I don't think that somebody's 20 hours um, really overshadows somebody's one. It, it's still time that you're giving um, to this community that we live in. Well, on the lighter side, thinking of the kickoff. Yep. <laughs> whose idea? <laughs> whose idea was that? Out. I don't know, but we have a great communications team that come up with these themes every year. And um, I've been a part of, of many of them, but... Boy, having a gala red carpet <laughs> affair was, was quite nice, and to kind of get up in our fancy clothes and accept our sort of awards, Emmys and Oscars, uh, really, was, really was a good time. And, and I think that, you know, I think that's important, too, that being involved in the Manatnock United Way, it's a good time. Um, it's not drudgery. It's yeah. not painful work. It's, uh, it's, it's good work, feel-good work. And, and recognition is always good. Recognition is always important. You Recognition's want, great. You don't want to feel like you're taking advantage of or being used. No, and, and I think recognition, that's a, a great point, and at the kickoff especially, where we really recognize our pace setters, the, the companies that do their campaigns early and really help raise that bar up before my teams, like people that work, the volunteers that I work with, go out we already have a baseline. We're not starting at zero, and, and that's great. And I think we do a lot to recognize all of the volunteers in the campaign as well. Uh, we have weekly breakfasts where everybody's invited to come. We highlight, we give big rounds of applause to folks who have had a, a zero to dollar, somebody who hasn't contributed before that does. And it's exciting for that donor, and it's exciting for that, that team leader that, that gets that donation. And, and we celebrate that, and that is important. The... Um Again, on the lighter side, hopefully I don't offend anybody. <laughs> Some people went really out of their, their way, in a good way, to really get into the spirit of your kickoff. They did. Um, the spirit of the kickoff, I, right, we had the press there, we, we had a limo donated so that some of our really um, highfalutin people could come in their fancy gowns and, and come down. Um, we had some singing. Uh, Jojo Mead came yep. and, great and did singer. a gr- great singer, great job, made it exciting. And I think the campaigns that are at the businesses, mm. which the public doesn't <laughs> see, is really exciting too. We've had some companies that have had internal employee mm. campaigns where I, you know, I hear the stories of, of getting dressed up and giving awards and, and skits and fancy food and um, you know, play some games for a small fee mm. and all of the proceeds to that come back to the United Way as well. So it makes it exciting and, and easy, I think, for, for some of the larger companies or companies that have an employee campaign to make it fun and help everybody to, to be involved. The, um, as we get ready to, ready to wrap up, yep. what would you tell the people, about, especially about the ones who go from donor to recipient to volunteer? I think that... Again, the only phrase I can think of is that it's an investment. Time and money invested in the Mananak United Way is a long-term investment, whether it's long-term for you personally or for somebody that you know. 
And it doesn't matter. I, I could not take all of the dollars and all of the hours and stack them up and have them equal what I got when my daughter was sick and we received those services. Um, you know, it was six weeks of our lives. Thankfully, she's better now. But those six weeks, that peace of mind was nothing in comparison to anything that I'd given. Um, so I, I encourage people to, to donate, both financially and of their time. And the rewards are remarkable. And as we get ready to go to a PSA one, I'll steal from another commercial. It's like MasterCard. Peace of mind is priceless. That it is. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Okay. American democracy. Running a country can be downright messy. In fact, from time to time, we can find ourselves in some pretty sticky situations. One, One half, half tells, tells us something is a good, good idea, idea, while the other half tells us it's a bad idea. idea. We only hear about the arguments and the bickering. In an age where we're being bombarded with competing messages, it's easy to be cynical. It's easy to think nothing will get done. Fortunately, in America, we have a way to make sure everyone's opinions are heard. Yeah, it's like a ice cream sundae where we can choose our own flavors. It's easy to complain that it's just too messy. Yeah, but sometimes messy can be very good. Like, like an, an ice, ice cream, cream sundae. sundae. American democracy. It may be messy. Mm, but, but it sure, sure is good. good. Learn how you can help make American democracy stronger. Log on to www.representativedemocracy.org. Well, we're back. Yeah, Heidi was a great, bubbly, exciting yeah. person. I don't think you could ask for a better spokesperson. Yeah. No, no offense to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> None taken. Yeah. None taken. Uh, she is yeah. very eloquent, but yeah. she's not atypical in her experiences. Yeah, right. And she's the perfect example of the donor recipient <coughs> and, and not knowing what's going to come up in your own life. And, and I think she emphasized it. Yeah. Most people don't, they don't have any idea when something can pop up just mm -hmm. like that. So we have about three minutes. Okay. We'll give each one of you the opportunity, or if one wants to speak all the time, <laughs> to wrap it up <laughs> and explain to people why, they sh why it's in their best interest to donate, mm -hmm. whether it's money or time. Well, I'll start. I was just going to emphasize that through your Monadnock United Way contribution, you are funding services of the partner agencies, services that affect so many individuals and families in this, in this community. It might be a child who, or a family who would not have access to food, would go, would go hungry. It might be an elderly person in their home who, again, might not be able to go out for food, who might, might need Meals on Wheels. It might be a child in the community who would benefit from a big brother, big sister, and just a multitude, really, from prenatal care to, to hospice services are all available because of the funding of the United Way. Yeah, and it happens from time to time, um, whether it's a job loss, sometimes uh, reduction in hours, or what a lot of our employees are doing locally or have been doing through this economic downturn to try not to have to lay folks off, but all of a sudden you don't have enough money for fuel. And, you know, whether you're a, a mom and dad of, of small children or maybe you're helping an elderly parent, you, you want to heat your home for the winter. You want your family to be warm. Um, it may be in, an early intervention. Um, we have a lot of young parents who receive services from one of our partner agencies who helps um, infants through age three with um, delayed disabilities, learning disabilities um, due to something that happened around birth. And we had one um, volunteer in particular this year talk to us in, at great length about the amazing help that she got and how her twin daughters, who are now 10 years old, are the absolutely normal 10-year-olds. And you know she couldn't, couldn't have done it without the assistance of this particular agency. So they're just, um, and the list go on and on and on. Um, faces, uh, somebody that you're standing behind in the grocery store, somebody that you're um, talking to in the line at the bank probably has either received services or knows somebody that's received services. We had talked earlier <clears throat> with Heidi, for example, Rise, my grandson, he had high le lead levels. Mm. And Rise made a, a big difference in his life. Now, I'll pick on you, but I, you know, being in the military, I noticed one thing. You're the only one that's 
not dress completely? Could you? I don't see a United Way pin on you. <laughs> I have a terrible history with my United Way pins. <laughs> I was on my way to speak yeah. at a Rotary Club meeting, yeah. Chris, and they handed me one, and I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in the back. I'm putting it on. I'm not very coordinated anyway. And the little pin, the little hasp on the back, drops onto the floor of the car. I can't find it. It's on the bottom next to the door. I can't get to it. So driving down 101... You're I not open the door to get it, <laughs> and it yeah. falls you're out on a one-on-one. On one, so. Right. <laughs> so they're probably giving me my, giving me my <laughs> full allotment of pins. Yeah, right. and I, I, I mean, you, you guys said it. Uh, you, you said it perfectly. And, and I, I just like to reach out to to your viewers and say, for those of you who have been supporters of the United Way, and who have funded all of those good things and many more than what Mary and Nancy have described. If there's any way to reach a little bit deeper into your wallets this season, it would it would be a big help. It doesn't take any work to imagine the extent of needs that are out in our community and the wonderful job we're doing in, in fulfilling them. And to those who don't have the opportunity to give, who haven't had the opportunity to give, we need you on board. We've got a tremendous opportunity to have more people sign up, and we can make it painless. It's not about looking in your wallet to look at the dollars you have today. We can... We can put it on your credit card and bill you quarterly, <laughs> monthly. We can send you bills monthly because a little bit, as Chris was referencing earlier in the show, you give a dollar or two a week, it's pretty painless by the week, and it amounts to a whole lot of good by the end of the year. So please, please help. Thank you. I want to thank you, everyone for coming. You did a great job, yeah. and hopefully this benefits. And so to our guest, listen up. If you can, donate either time or money. <clears throat> And hopefully we'll see you again on the long road. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Chris. Thank you. Refreshments provided by G. Housen Distributors. Premium beverages delivered.